In this camera basics video, I will show you how to take higher quality images with an easy trick, exposed to the right. In digital photography, it is a common practice to use something called a histogram to validate correct exposure. A histogram is a tool that graphs the tones in an image. Higher areas of the graph represent more pixels of that tone present in the image. Underexposure usually produces a left skewed histogram, overexposure produces a right skewed histogram, and normal exposure produces a balanced histogram with most tonal detail falling in the center. Exposing to the right attempts to push the peak of the histogram, the part of the image with the most prevalent tones, as far to the right hand side as possible without blowing out any highlights. While the image may look overexposed, when processed back to the correct brightness, it will contain more tonal information and less noise in shadow areas, maximizing image quality. But why does this work? How can simply slightly overexposing an image improve image quality? Consider a digital camera with seven stops of dynamic range that can take 12-bit raw image files. If we take a picture, we should see a smooth, gradual transition between tones. But if I raise the shadows in this landscape shot, you can clearly see banding and noise caused by a lack of color fidelity. This type of degradation is typical when aggressively lifting dark areas of an image, but not when adjusting highlight levels. Why is this? By representing the seven stops of our camera's dynamic range as tonal sections and our entire tonal range partitioned by the amount of available tonal levels, we can see what's going on. Because f-stops are naturally logarithmic, each stop records half of the light of the previous one. Remember, since we have 12-bit RAW files, our camera is capable of recording 4096 tonal levels. This means that the brightest stop takes up 2048 out of our 4096 tonal levels, the second 1024, the third 512, and so on. Therefore, if you don't utilize the right sections of your histogram, which often occurs when trying to produce a normal exposure, you are effectively wasting a large amount of the available encoding levels of your camera. In practice, biasing your exposures so that the histogram is pushed against the right boundary without blowing highlights will produce the highest image quality. The first time you try this method, the image may look too bright, but that's okay because in editing, you can adjust the exposure back down to your desired levels and apply edits normally. Since you expose to the right, you gather more information and when the exposure is balanced, ETTR images will have a higher signal to noise ratio, reducing posterization and noise, which are often revealed as dark areas of an image are lifted. At this point, you may still be skeptical of this simple, easy way to boost image quality. I was too, so I conducted an experiment. Shooting the same scene with both normal and ETTR metering techniques, you can see that while the ETTR image is much brighter than the normally exposed image, nothing is blown out. Importing the photos into Lightroom and reducing the brightness of the ETTR image reveals an image that, when I aggressively lift shadows and black values, has less posterization and noise. But even though ETTR is a good way to improve image quality, it is not a technique that can be universally applied to all genres of photography. Exposing to the right is most useful in controlled scenes, such as landscape photography. Since blowing out highlights is a major risk when increasing exposure, items like gradual neutral density filters ensure that all highlights are contained within the camera sensor's dynamic range. However, with or without filters, some scenes may simply have too much dynamic range for your camera to capture effectively, so bracketing shots may be the only way to produce a high-quality image. The practicality of ETTR also suffers when you need to maintain a certain depth of field or shutter speed, which is a common necessity in portrait and action photography. And since increasing ISO does not increase the amount of light entering the camera, ETTR is not applicable if you increase ISO. Also, ETTR will take some practice to master. One thing I have noticed on my Sony camera, which may also affect your model, is that the image preview on the back of my LCD may show in blown out highlights when in fact they are not. This is actually because on my Sony and most other digital cameras, when you preview the shot on the back of your camera and view the histogram, the camera is using a JPEG preview of the RAW file, which has less dynamic range. 
Sometimes the discrepancy isn't much, but I've noticed on my Sony that it's close to two to three stops, which is huge. Due to this, I always shoot multiple shots with different settings, with at least one to match what the camera says is a correct exposure, and at least one to match what I think my computer will take as a correct exposure. So in conclusion, ETTR is a great way you can dramatically improve image quality by simply understanding a little technical science of how images are digitally represented. By shifting the histogram to the right as far as possible, you are using your camera to its fullest potential, improving image quality. Thanks for watching this Camera Basics video and stay tuned for more educational photography content here on my channel. Thank you so much for watching this Apple Apps photography video. If you would like to support the channel, the best way is through subscribing with notifications so that you don't miss any new content. Feel free to rate and share the video, and if you have any feedback, I will try my hardest to respond to your comments and incorporate any suggestions into future videos. If you prefer to read my content instead of watching it, or want to view other helpful articles, tutorials, and learn more about Apple Apps, then visit my new website, appleapps.org. To follow me on my photography adventures, visit my Instagram page at Vincent Ledvina and also my print store. Finally, consider joining my Patreon for one-on-one -on -one support and extra content, check out my Buy Me A Coffee page, visit my merch store to buy clothing with unique Apple App style designs, and as always, PayPal donations are an option. All these resources will be linked in the description. With that, thank you for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.